more purple main needles. Welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon Omega Ruby version. I'm Purple Rodri. Last time we found a bunch of hidden treasure in C Mauville. We actually sold the big nuggets and the nuggets for a total of 100,000 Poke Dollars. I went ahead and bought a bunch of Ultra Balls. I think I bought like 60. I picked up a couple Hyper Potions and pretty much just everything we're going to need in order to continue Legendary Hunting. Today we are going to be going after the Legendary Dogs from the Johto region. And they're actually located somewhere near Rustboro. As you can see, there's a little dot. It's called the Trackless Forest. And now a quick explanation of how we're going to go about catching these. So this is a time set event. So between 0, 0 and 20 minutes past the hour, you can find Raikou. For Entei, it's between 20 and 40 minutes past the hour. And for Suicune, it's between 40 and 0, 0 minutes past the hour. So right now, I'm actually starting off with Suicune. So let me go ahead and get ready to take him on. I'm, I'm pretty excited, guys. I think our team is very well and ready, too. You guys know the Manectric uh, Gallade strategy you have going on, so let's open up the portal and put our hands deep inside, because here we go, guys. Rodri versus Suicune. Time to take him on. Oh, man. Here we go, guys. I'm very excited and a little bit nervous at the same time. It's going to be a little fun catching Suicune. I feel like that's always been one of those Pokemon that stands out to me. When I was younger, the first time I ever played through the Johto region was actually with Silver and Gold. It wasn't Crystal, and it was with my friend Jacob, uh, which you guys probably know about. I actually named my rival after him in Heart Gold. And, you know, me and Jacob, we used to, we used to like, pretty much do, like, the half-and-half half games. Like, he would do a version, like, blue, I would do red. That, that sort of friendship, you know? I think we all had those sorts of friends when we were younger. The ones you would split things up with. And, you know, that's what we did with uh, this game, with gold and silver. And I played gold, he played silver. And I remember we used to, like, run around and catch all the legendaries. And back then, we, we didn't really have guides and stuff, so I had no idea how to catch Suicune. I knew he randomly popped up, and he would always constantly pop out at me. I felt like it was some sort of part of my destiny to catch this Pokemon because of how often it popped out at me. I think I eventually ended up using the Master Ball on Entei and not Suicune, which was a little bit, you know, random. But I just, I like the way Entei looked too. But yeah, just, you know, those little moments I had as a kid. So I have a lot of fond memories whenever I see Pokemon from Johto. Just because it reminds me of all the crazy, you know, little dumb things I used to do as a kid with my friends. You know, just staying up late, playing Pokemon on like a Game Boy Color with like a flashlight because, you know, you didn't want to wake anyone up. You didn't want the lights on. And I just remember even, one of the things I remember the most is like, how hot it could get with like using the flashlight to play your Game Boy Color in the middle of the night. It would just be like steaming. You got to remember I live in Florida. So it was just like really, really hot with like a flashlight trying to play the Game Boy. Oh man, I, I just, I have so many little memories of that. I think Johto is probably the fondest memory for me uh, because I have so many, you know, good experiences of it uh, from when I was a kid. All right, so this is taking a little bit longer than I expected it to. I, I'm assuming these are going to take a little bit. As you know, we have to catch three of them. So I'm going to try to make things a little bit faster and, you know, just cut to the chase, you know, pretty much just get to the point where we catch them because after Suicune, we still have two other Pokemon, which we need to catch. So if this Pokeball doesn't work, which, of course, it isn't because Suicune is going to be very annoying to catch. I'm going to throw one more, and then if I don't catch it here, uh, maybe like two more, maybe two more. I don't know. Once in a while, I like to mix it up because you... Ooh, wait. Oh! Oh! We didn't... I, I thought we had it. Thought we had it, guys. I, I really did. I thought for a second that was going to be it. Maybe one more. Maybe one more. All right. This will this'll be it, guys. I'm going to throw one more. Cross your fingers. If we don't catch it, I'll be seeing you guys in a few seconds. Hey, there we go, guys. We caught Suicune after a lot of Ultra Balls. I, I probably spent more than I wanted to. I didn't want to spend that many Ultra Balls on Suicune. But you know what? Sometimes that is the, the trick of the trade. Sometimes you have to put in the work. With that, registration has been completed. And we have obtained Suicune. It embodies the compassion of a pure spring of water. It runs across the land with gracefulness. This Pokemon has the power of purify dirty water. Sounds kind of nice. I feel like a couple people could use that uh, Pokemon. How nice would it be to have Pokemon in real life that could help you with things like that? Like purifying water? You know how many people that could help? It would be insane. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nickname. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it Spree. Kind of like running. Kind of like fresh water, spring, spree. All right, guys. With that, we went ahead and caught the first of the legendary trio. 
and I will be back with you guys in two seconds once I prepare for the next one. You feel an intense gaze, almost electrifying. So every time you leave here, like I went to heal up, you come back and depending on the Pokemon that's here, whether it's Raikou, Suicune, or Entei, it'll tell you something different. As you may know, this is actually an electrifying force, whatever it is. Here we go, Rodri versus Raikou. That is who we're gonna be taking on next. And well, you know, I, I don't know, if you guys thought it was gonna be Entei from an electrifying force, you better check your facts and uh, get them correct. All right. Now, let's go ahead and see what I can do to Raikou. Probably just gonna do the, the good old same strategies we always do. This time, I remember the Quick Ball. I know I forget the Quick Balls a lot, but I'm gonna try to use them a little more. I forgot it was Suicune, but I remember this time I was like, alright, I'm actually gonna use the Quick Balls. I'll probably pick up a couple Timer Balls too. I've never been a big fan of Timer Balls. I really just don't know when to use them. Oh, Mother Fudge, why did I click Thunder Wave? I wasn't even trying to do that. My mind just completely zoned out there for a second. Okay, let me go ahead and switch out, actually. I think I know what we're going to do. Uh, thankfully, we have a Pokemon that can put Pokemon to sleep. So that is what we're going to be doing. We're going to bring out Iro, and she's going to help us put, you know, Raikou to sleep. Then we'll weaken him with Gallade, with Elric, and then we should be on our way, on our merry way. As I was saying, I never really use Timer Balls. I don't know what it is. I just... I'm, I'm really unsure of when you use them. I think it's supposed to be when the battle lasts longer than like 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. Um, that they become a lot more efficient. But I've just never really, you know, well too much into it. I usually stick to Ultra Balls or, you know, whatever it is. Dusk Balls. I love Dusk Balls. I think they're some of the best. You know what? Another fond memory I have of Johto, I think, is the fact that it was in Johto where they... You know, began introducing all the cool different balls. Um, I think there was an episode in the anime where, you know, Ash visits some guy and he teaches him how there are other Pokeballs. I don't know why, but that gives me a really just warm feeling when I think about it. Like, it reminds me of being such a kid and, you know, not knowing so much about Pokemon, not being as experienced. I'm still not insanely experienced, but, you know, back then, it was all just brand new and you had no idea. And it was just so cool that, you know, some guy made different colored Pokeballs and stuff. I remember seeing some of them and I was like, man, this is awesome. I would definitely get those and those and those and throw it at this and this and this Pokemon. You know, I, I don't think I was the only one doing that. I think a lot of us who grew up with Pokemon, you know, went through that phase of where you were growing with Ash and learning at the same time. Man, just so many good memories of the Johto region. I think it was just one of those regions that really stands out just for the fact that, you know, it was the first expansion to Pokemon. You know, originally it's just Kanto and you're just chilling and you're like, oh, 151, this is awesome. But then they bring in this whole new world, these these whole new Pokemon, and it just blows your mind as a kid. I remember that. It just took me, like, it just took me back and I was like, wow, like, I can't believe this is amazing. I can't even imagine what's to come because I'm imagining, you know, they're going to keep building on Pokemon. They're going to keep on going and it's something crazy and magical is going to happen. And it, it truly, truly did. Uh, if you look at Pokemon now, how far it's come. I can't even imagine, you know, what it's going to get to. If you look at the game now, like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, how beautiful it is. How how insane it is to see these Pokemon who were originally 2D. Like Raikou, uh, I still remember his scream, his little, you know, high-pitched, terrible audio scream. Compared to now, where you're seeing this Pokemon, like, you know, you can see it in 3D, which is just amazing. I can't even imagine what's going to come with Pokemon. I think I saw, like, a little comic strip talking about the progression of Pokemon, and it was like, oh, here they are in the Game Boy, oh, here they are in the Game Boy Advance, the 3DS, and, and every little bit, they're, they're improving, right? They're becoming a lot more realistic, and I think the next few steps were like, oh, it's a hologram, oh, a scientist created one, oh, it's a real-life Pokemon. You know, who, who would think, like, if that happens next, how amazing would that be? You know, we're getting to the point where if we had a holographic Pokemon, it, it's possible, and you, you, you never know. It could happen. You never know all the crazy things that are going on in, in, with technology these days. When I was a kid, I remember just thinking to myself, you know, this was, this was what, this is a throwback. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I always loved was my N64, and I loved playing Ocarina of Time and messing around on it, and I always dreamt as a kid. I was like, man, I wonder if someday the technology will come to the point where I will be able to play Ocarina of Time on a handheld, you know? Eventually, I owned a PSP, 
PlayStation Portable, and you know you could like mess around with it and hack it and do things to it. And I got Ocarina of Time on there. It it barely ran. It was like 15 frames a second, but I was still like, whoa, this is awesome. Maybe someday it'll run at full speed. Now I'm sitting here. We have you know Ocarina of Time 3D, and we take it for granted. Uh, and it's insane, you know, how far technology has truly, truly come. That the graphics are so beautiful on a little handheld compared to what they were on the N64. And it just blows my mind. There's so many crazy things going on. And I just thought I'd say it because we have Majora's Mask 3D coming out soon. Uh, you know, here this week, this Friday. And I just can't believe it. With that, we went ahead and caught Raikou. And that was not too bad of a catch. And it's just amazing, guys. Just, man, you gotta appreciate the life you're living in now. You guys are so lucky you get to carry these games around and enjoy it. It's a good life out there for uh, video gamers. All right, with that, Raikou's data was added to Pokedex. Uh, we're gonna give it a nickname. Let's see what the data says for Raikou. Raikou looks really, really cool. I don't know why. Uh, Raikou embodies the speed of lightning. The roars of this Pokemon send shockwaves shuddering through the air and shake the ground as if lightning bolts had come crashing down. So let's go ahead and give this Raikou a nickname. I haven't really thought of one. I haven't really been preparing nicknames. I've kind of just been going off of something I read in their description and whatever comes to my mind. So let's see what comes here. I think I'm just going to call it, uh, how about Bolt? I like Bolt. With that, Bolt has been transferred to the PC. And we are on our way, guys, to catching the third legendary. I'm going to save, and I'll be back once again in a couple seconds. Okay, guys, so we're pretty much ready to do it. I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys, you know, I've been healing up a little bit, and I thought it'd be kind of cool just to fly back one more time, back to the base, back to the place of explorations. Uh, I don't want there to be any confusion on how you catch these Pokemon. You always soar back to the same spot, guys. So, you know, what I recommend would be, if you're at the point where I am and you're lacking Ultra Balls and stuff, fly out, you know, heal up in Mauville, heal up in Rustboro, then just come on, soar back, and then you'll end up right back in the perfect place. I don't even think you have to leave the spot, uh, but, you know, if with time purposes, whatever it is, like if you're waiting to catch a Pokemon at a later time, uh, you know, you're probably better off just flying off, healing up, and coming back. As you can see, there was a blazing something fire in this forest, which means that we are waiting for the third and final, the strongest of the legendary dogs. Here we go, Rodri versus Entei. I feel like Entei is always the leader of this pack, not just from the movie, but I feel like he's the biggest one, and just, I don't know, I've always seen Fire as a leader. I've always seen Fire as being very influential and forthcoming, so I don't know why. I've always just seen Entei as the alpha male, the alpha dog, and you know what's funny? Uh, they call them the legendary dogs, but they're actually like cats. They kind of look like cats. If you really thought about it, they look more like cats than dogs. I don't remember where I read that, but it's, it's the truth. It really does look like that. All right, guys, we're back to the strats. You know, the good old strategies. We got Elric coming back. Hopefully this doesn't do a whole... Okay, I'm burned. Yay, I did not want to use a lot of healing things because I barely have any hyper potions or full restores. I'm going to go for the false swipe. Let's hope it does a lot to this Entei. We have it paralyzed, which is quite amazing for us. That should pretty much, you know, do the job. I'm not too worried about it. I think, uh, you know, that's going to pack the punches needed. That did nothing. Awesome. That did nothing, and I'm going to have to heal myself here. Okay, well, Entei is, might be one of the toughest ones for us to catch. Did not expect him to be that difficult, but I guess, you know, with uh, a lot of power comes a lot of responsibility, and his Entei is not trying to let itself... Be caught. I'm probably just going to weaken it down, and then we'll see what we get ourselves into. All right, let's go for the, uh, huh. What move should I use on it? I'm really not too sure. I think maybe Psycho Cut? I'm hoping it doesn't KO it. Cross your fingers. Oh, fudge. Okay, thank goodness. Holy crap. Give me a little scare there. I thought for a, uh, for a second, I really thought we KO'd it. Whenever I see that, that bar just go shooting down, I get very, very nervous. All right, cool, cool, cool. So after this, we'll be able to start throwing the Ultra Balls at it. Completely forgot the quick balls again. Don't know why that always passes my mind. I think it's weakened enough. Uh, let's go ahead and throw an Ultra Ball at it then, guys. And we have it weakened, and it's probably going to take a little while. So I'm going to throw this one. And if it doesn't catch, which I'm guessing it's not going to, then we'll just come back in a couple seconds once I've actually caught it. Hey! 
There we go! Alright, took a little bit. We gotcha. Entei was caught. We are lacking a lot of Ultra Balls, guys. We have used way too many on this trio. Hopefully, we'll have enough to catch the other two trios. And then the remaining huge, crazy amount of Pokemon that are still left in this game. Registration is complete. Entei embodies the passion in magma. This Pokemon is thought to have been born in the eruption of Volcano. It sends up massive bursts of fire that utterly consume all that they touch. With that, let's go ahead and give Entei a nickname then. And once again, let me think if I can come up with one for it. Uh, I, I don't really know. I'm just going to go ahead and throw out a uh, random name out there. And we are going to go ahead and call it... Uh, Erup. So with that, Erup has been transferred to Lynette's PC, and we are done here for today, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got the legendary dogs of the Johto region. Next time, we will continue onwards and probably go after another trio. I know the next ones that are coming up are a little bit tougher, so it might take a little more timing and, and you know, just chance and stuff and weird things to coordinate them. So it might be a weird chronological order on what's coming up. Uh, so just be ready for that. I'm going to try my best to make sure I, you know, I catch these remaining Pokemon because we're getting very close to the point where you guys are actually going to be sweethearts and are going to be awesome and are going to help me out because I don't have some of the other Pokemon. So we're very, very close to that point. I'm going to go ahead and land back in Falibor Town. This is where I usually come to stock up. I don't know why. I just kind of like this area. It's kind of nice. I like the volcano. Kind of reminds me a little bit of El Salvador. Honestly, it does look a little bit like it with the volcano mountain thing looking thing. All right, with that, let's land to the ground. I'm going to go talk to my girl in Nurse Joy and tell her I just caught three legendaries today. High fives all around to you guys. Thanks for all the tips, all the recommendations. Next time, we'll continue from this point. Make sure to give this video a like. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.